Hi, I'm Tony Van Veen, CEO of Disc Makers, and I'm back with my friend, Cheryl Englehart, musician extraordinaire. I don't know, are you extraordinaire? I think you are. I, th I, I think I have to say yes at this point. I'm beyond the whole, like, be humble. Like, yes. Yes. So we just we just did a recording three days ago, and we're going down our NFT journey and trying to figure this out. So I've done a little online theoretical searching. And Cheryl, what have you done? Um, I have done some digging into conversations, talking to other people who are in these NFT forums. And I've done some looking from an artist perspective, what would it look like if I actually wanted to get going with an NFT? So I think today, uh, get a pen and paper because we're going to throw a lot of words. It might sound like we're speaking alien. Um, and I, we're just going to go through some of the things that I discovered in the doing and you've sort of done the research behind and uh, we're going to move on through through this journey. I think we're at the place of, OK, what's a marketplace and what are some of these words mean? Um, and, you know, before even getting into my own NFT that we that we're going to create. So I have to warn you, Cheryl, um, I am very good at continuing to just ask the same question over and over again until the alien starts to slowly turn into human speak. Perfect. I think that's what I think that's what we we all need right now because some of some of this is I've read it I've seen the word minted four hundred times I'm like what is that what is it yeah. I mean we'll we've talk seen about NFT. that we'll we'll talk yeah. about that in a future video when yeah. we actually get to minting but yeah. uh, let's so let's talk about marketplaces and I'm assuming that a marketplace is a place where you can ultimately market i.e. sell your NFT so tell yeah. tell us about what you found and which ones are kind of the the, the, the bigger or the better ones for, for artist related NFTs. Yeah, there, there are a lot and the market, what I've, what I've learned is that marketplaces are places where artists can directly upload their collectibles. That's what they're called or your collection of collectibles. So for example, if you are an artist and you want to have or a musician and you want to have, um, your singles, each one be an NFT inside of a, an album. The album will be the collection. Each NFT would be the collectible. So the, those are some words I, I found. And you can go to these marketplaces and upload your collections yourself. And there are also platforms that you can apply to. Um, and I'll, I'll throw out some names here, like soundx.xyz, royal.io. They are platforms that are trying to to really connect fans with artists, NFT buyers with musicians, and you can apply and send your music to them. And it's almost like a, a little marketplace inside of the marketplace. They'll take your stuff to the marketplaces. They might already have built-in audiences, um, and, and they're going to sort of guide you through that process. So there's sort of two ways to go, just as the, the independent on your own or through one of these other platforms that ultimately ends up on a marketplace. The marketplaces that are sort of bigger, and I when I went to some of these Discord chat rooms, it did seem that there was a good amount of support for people who purchase NS F NFTs uh, for the marketplace OpenSea. Um, that's uh, OpenSea it, seems to be like the eight hundred pound gorilla in uh, in terms of NFT marketplaces. Yes, yeah, and it's I not just for often. music. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's the name I see most often. Yeah, it's not just music. It's a lot of other things. Uh, just so you so you know, and we'll get into this more when we actually create the NFT, but the file formats that you can actually upload as the NFT, they can be picture files like PNGs or JPEGs. They can be video files. They can be audio files, MP3s, and they can also be 3D models. And I don't even know what that is, so don't ask. And they can, um, But they can be more. They can actually, it could be documents. They could be PDF files. Yes. Uh, they could be- Your basic- there's virtual, file. anything virtual or digital, right? Metaverse, yeah. characters, you name it. Uh, it. It could all be a part of the the asset. That, yeah. That and some building. marketplaces um, have restrictions on what kinds of uh, file types you can upload. Um, some of them don't have 3D models. Some of them don't do video, but they just do audio and PDFs or JPEG. So, you know, but uh, OpenSea seems to do everything there. Um, each marketplace, so other marketplaces are Rarible, R-A-R-I-B-L-E is another one that I saw. Um, Mintable is one. Um, that's another big one. And Catalog, uh, which is 
was very hard for me to navigate, so I didn't really get to dig into that. But they they do only auctions, it seems like, unless I missed a part of that website. Um, so let the, me ask you a question. Yeah. About these marketplaces. Yes. If you have your first single that you want to start to sell as an NFT, you have to pick one marketplace where that is sold, correct? I have yet to see any restrictions that say if your NFT is over here, that means it can't be over here. You might need to distinguish that it's that there are two copies of it available, um, but I'm not sure how that works yet. Okay, good. That's, on that. that's the thing we have to figure out, right? Yeah. To, to use the one marketplace only. That's a, I'm writing that question down for next time. To use to use a streaming analogy, right? Is it is an NFT, you know, equivalent to having your song on Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon, or right. is it more like having your movie available only on Netflix? Right. And you have to go to Netflix, i.e., you have to go to one marketplace to get it, as opposed to going to multiple marketplaces. Yeah. My guess right. is, since this is a unique single asset, that you probably have to pick one marketplace. That's that's my feeling too. Um, I you know one uh, I might end up taking a couple of singles and trying a few different marketplaces before I do the whole record and seeing which one has the audience that I want, see which one gets the most bites. And um, but I think that's a great question. So one marketplace only. I'm going to add that in for the next time so we can come back with that answer. It also is worth noting that some marketplaces have all three of the different ways of selling this. We talked about two of them last time. There's fixed price, right? Where you say, okay, this is there's a thousand of these and they're ten dollars or ten Ethereum, whatever. Yeah. Um, ten units price. There then there's auction. We talked about auction just sort yeah. of as a bundle, but there's two types of auctions. One is an unlimited auction, meaning I'll put this up until I see a bid that I will accept. And so there's no time limit on it until I say, yep, I accept your bid. And then there's the timed auction, which is this is available for seven days. And it like the top bid at midnight on Friday is the bid that that wins it. So just uh, it's worth noting that some of these uh, marketplaces may only do fixed prices and may only do auctions. And, and you just want to know which one you're getting into. So do you have a an idea of how you would want to auction because we did talk last time about we auction did. versus fixed price you want to auction whether you would do a timed or an unlimited i'm interested to maybe do an unlimited auction for one of the singles before the record like one of the singles that's already out it's already public so i'm not worried about it being leaked or anything and then maybe the week of the album being out maybe do a timed auction on a couple of the others because i'm not sure which one is going to um resonate the most and and you know maybe the auction if it's unlimited they'll keep going up and up and up and there will be some uh, unknown ceiling uh you know i don't want to put a ceiling on it if there's if people are going to keep i i don't know but then so you're, you're to gonna have to decide then all right this is enough for me right, right. okay yeah a uh, hundred thousand yeah. dollars is enough for my single that is enough i, I, I will, will i will you. i will take i will take you you lucky hundred thousand dollar bidder exactly uh, but it, i would think if you if you do a, a a timed auction then if there's enough interest it it could get to 200,000. Right. Or are we missing out on people because they're not available for that amount of time? It, and like, is it going to be 24 hours where it's really short and they have to see it? Or is it going to be a week where there's a good chance that anyone interested is going to pop in and they will see it? Like, I don't want to, are we eliminating people by the time and what is the time? So I think that's research as well for me to do is see how long are timed ones really up for? Is it like a four hour thing? Like, is this eBay style or is it, you know, up for a month? So I, I'm curious about that. One of the most frustrating things for me has been because you know in the past i'm looked i'm like i gotta buy an nft i gotta figure out how this works because uh i will make a confession i don't own any nfts heck i don't even own any crypto I'm, that's that's how old school i am but i wanted to buy an nft and like every marketplace i would go to it's like sold out sold out sold out and then like it, it was really frustrating because i felt like oh i might be interested in this but i missed that boat i missed that boat mm. so i would think that a longer window gives you a more opportunity to promote your NFT sale campaign yep. and it gives more people a chance to get there and actually put in a bid. Yeah, I think the timed auction definitely feels good. I am curious to see what unlimited auction is. Um, 
But yeah, timed auction is feeling the best for now, but I think there's just a teeny bit more research for me to do there. Um, one thing around marketplaces that I would love to to put out there is the which marketplaces support which cryptocurrency. The big one that you hear about, the main one, is Ethereum. Uh, and with Ethereum, there is, you know, you hear about NFTs and blockchain being fairly environmentally not friendly. There are other cryptocurrency options that uh, Rarible and OpenSea both support, which is Polygon. Um, they are known to be energy efficient. There's newer. There's another one called Tezos and Flow and Klatin, K-L-A-T-Y-N. Um, and it's just good to know that you're able to select which currencies you accept. It's kind of like if you were a store and you can say, I accept MasterCard, Visa, and American Express, or you could say, I just accept Visa. So essentially, you can you can say, yes, I accept all of these. Uh, or if you really want to go down the environmental efficiency road, you can say, I only accept Polygon and Tezos and Flow. Um, you will probably be um, cornering your market a little bit and eliminating some possible purchases because Ethereum is what seems to be the most common currency to be using. It, it is certainly for NFTs. Uh, Ethereum is the main currency. Um, but that comes with high fees. And we'll talk at some point about gas fees, or, or maybe yep. now, I don't know. But it comes well, be because yeah. the, the currency is so in demand. Uh, and, and again, we should talk about blockchain at some point in time, I guess, that there's a lot of processing that has to happen on the Ethereum blockchain. And, and there is more demand than supply. And yep. that creates these fees, which is basically you're paying the computers on the network to do the processing and the logging and the minting and all this other stuff that we're going to be talking about, um, and and so that makes that makes it more expensive to buy an NFT in Ethereum because it's not just the price of the NFT that you're paying, but also this gas fee for processing in addition. Yes, exactly. Um, one of the things besides being energy efficient for Polygon that they boast is no gas fees. And there are others that also are, I think Tezos and Flow are also no gas fees, which is a new thing. A lot of them are in beta testing on these platforms. You'll see a little beta next to it. Um, so that's good for you as the artist uploading the content as well as the buyer who would normally Although I think you might be able to select it similar to PayPal, like if you or the buyer uh, absorbs the fees. But um, so that that might be good news too. people might be slowly getting into that. Um, but it's good to know on what marketplace you're using so that it's an option, especially down the line. So. Right. And yeah. and and by the way, some and I don't know whether Polygon does it. I, I believe in some of my conversations with folks who are into the crypto um, that there are gas fees for basically every currency, but mm -hmm. some of the uh, currency creators who are interested in actually building and promoting their currency and the value of their currency, they they basically absorb those gas fees. Mm -hmm. Like a polygon that has uh, no gas fees, that doesn't mean there are no gas fees paid, but it's it's hidden from us. It's like free yeah. shipping, right? Right. Uh, it, Someone's paying. UPS is still getting paid, but right. and somebody's paying UPS but we as the buyer are not. Right, exactly. So that was sort of the, you know, if I were to zoom out and say, okay, we looked at, um, you know, the marketplaces, OpenSea and Rarible looking like the best two for musicians. Um, and then we looked at sort of these sub marketplaces or these platforms that you can submit your music to, which I've done, royal.io. Um, sound xy.xyz um, to see what their process is. So I'm in, uh, you know, hopefully by the next time we talk, I'll know a little bit more about that. We know about creator earnings or royalties. We know about um, a little bit about the do cryptocurrencies. We, do we know? I, I don't think we talked about creator earnings. We, but... Oh, we, yeah, that, that's something that you can, you can set when you upload the NFT. Sorry, I, I had a note on that, but I think we'll talk about it more next time when we're actually creating the NFT, sure. but it's, um, some platforms call it a royalty, some call it a creator earning. It's basically your percentage if the person that buys your NFT decides to sell it again. If you if they buy it for $100 and then decide they want to sell it for 1000 and you have a royalty or a creator earning, whatever the platform, the marketplace calls it, of 10%, you would get $100 on the sale even though you had already sold it. Which is awesome. 
right? Yeah, it's amazing. Totally awesome. If, if, I mean, imagine if every time your old CDs that are sitting in a discount rack uh, in a, uh, at a, a local record store and somebody actually yep. buys that CD for $4, not that your CDs would ever sell for so little, but if somebody actually pays $4 and you actually got a dollar, right? Or 40 yeah, cents. Amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that definitely was like a, a th there's something got missed when the CD industry got started that like the resale of, yeah. Um, for the artist at least. So that's a cool thing. Um, that's also inside of all this. We know that we can create collectibles, single NFTs or collections of collectibles. Um, and we know about the fixed price versus the two different kinds of auctions, unlimited and timed. So I think by the, the next time we talk, I think uh, I'm going to I'm going to want to come in. I'm going to still be in these conversations. I'm using Discord uh, as a sort of a chat room area where there's a lot of NFT conversations going on. Um, I've been that's where I've been getting some of this information from people that have bought NFTs and are actually in the game and have the cryptocurrency to spend. Um, I'm going to still do more more in you know, research in there. Uh, and I'm going to look at what does it take to upload an NFT? I'll find out, can we do it on one marketplace or multiple? My guess is yours, which is it's going to be just one. And I think next time we're going to walk through, we will have a quick chat, but walk through um, uploading and creating a single NFT. Sure. And I, I think maybe for for some of the some of the folks who are, who are out here kind of following along, we may want to just do a do a real quick review like what is blockchain what is the blockchain and uh what 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 is this what's this token right how does this does the token attach to the asset is the asset part of the token uh is the token just something that's is it registered just on the blockchain how does it relate back to the asset that now is the nft that the that the buyer ends up owning. So I, I think uh, you you can do your research on kind of the, again, the, the, the marketplaces and the assets and how to do that. I'll, I'll do a little bit of digging on the, the token side of things. Cool. And then um, maybe we'll split that. We'll, we'll do a blockchain and token little session. And then we can do the, the other one NFT about how, how do we actually start doing this and figuring this yeah. out. Yeah, I love that. That's fantastic. Great. Cool. Thank you, Cheryl. Awesome. Thank you. I feel I feel smart NFT smarter already. I mean, me too. So great. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time. Great. Yeah.